How do? Time for Spider and Old Scooter again. It's me, Old Scooter. Spider McGillicuddy, Spider Mac, the artificial intelligence behind this game, which we'll be playing. Um, this edition is the In Defense of Science Fiction edition. So we're going to pop right into the game, play a few hands. Yep. Want to talk about radio news? A lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Don't know why. Sort of stacked up in my mind. So let's get on with the game. Quickly noting that I'm plugging two books, A Reluctant God and Ms. A Reluctant God 2014, A Tome, if you will, and Ms. A Fun Adventure Story. If you like science fiction, if you like archaeology, uh, and so forth. <laughs> okay, let's get on with the game. Boom, new game. You betcha. Two suits. Now, I'll um, do what I can to play this game while I'm talking. Frequently, when I'm just jabbering away, my um, concentration wavers. I make mistakes. I fail to see obvious moves. I'll try to keep all that stuff at a minimum. As, um, minimums are good. Know your minimums, particularly if you're flying an airplane. I was a pilot for a long time. I can talk airplanes, not modern, state-of-the-art airplanes, although I do read aviation week and space technology faithfully. So I kind of keep up, but I could no more fly a modern aircraft than I could uh, drive a brand-new car with all the stuff that's in brand-new cars. It's actually happening. Maybe I'll tell you about it one of these days. So this game is not going much of anywhere, so neither will I. I'll just take another deal. I don't want to get uh, too engrossed in the game, even though it's an engrossing kind of game. It's my very favorite time killer, Spider Solitaire. I hear it's catching on all over. It's been around for quite a while. This is the uh, Macintosh, the Apple default version, as I have said, ad nauseum, one of my favorite, I mean, that's quite a lot too much when you get nauseous about it. Uh, we had a fire out here, we've had lots of, several fires, uh, even since we started the spider and old scooter weirdness. Uh, if you were with me then, we had a report of a fire, and then it sort of disappeared, the reports, and uh, then we found it again. It wasn't far from here. It's quite frightening here in the mountains, full of super dry trees and brush and so forth. You, you see the TVs, and we're running low on air tankers at the moment, which is not good when you're having fires all over the place. And somehow I don't think that our current administration is going to suddenly throw a lot of money at a bunch more fire tankers, because I would be sort of admitting that there's a climatic problem uh, that's causing more fires than usual, and that's just a Chinese hoax, as you know. Those fires, fake fires. Darn, this is a terrible game. But anyway... Radio news departments comes to mind. We had another fire break out day before yesterday, just over yonder, um, maybe 10 miles from here. But we had friends living over nearby, and we ran over to see if we could help them evacuate. They pretty much had it under control. Oh, I hear a sad dog or a dog having a sad dream in the background. There are also fans. You might hear fans. Oh, what is it, baby? It's okay. No problems. Think positive. Oh. I wonder what they're dreaming when they do that. Oh, my goodness. All is good in that dog's life. Nothing really to complain about. 
So this fire broke out. And I went eagerly to the radio. Then I went to the Internet. Then I went to hither and yon trying to find information. And the problem is radio stations no longer have news departments, except locally the... Uh, There are two public broadcasting stations, NPR stations here. One of them has a significant news department. The other one has kind of a news department. But the big, powerful, rich AM station, they usually have one guy on duty, and he's sometimes doubling as the board engineer or something. But, I mean, nothing was on. It was this whole hilltop burning up, and... Uh, people being terribly concerned and uh, talking about evacuating and all that, and you couldn't find anything on the radio about it. I mean, one kid in the newsroom listening to the scanners would have known, hey, there's a big fire out in Edgewood. And it would have been on the radio, and we would have all been quite satisfied. But in this new era of profit is everything radio stations, they don't have news departments because they're kind of expensive yet to have people. In my day, as they say, um, a number one, number two, number three radio station in a market the size of Albuquerque here, heaven knows the bigger markets, would have, you know, three or four or five guys. They were all guys, mostly. <laughs> all guys, mostly, he said in hedging fashion. Um, as a news department, they were watching the wires and listening to the scanners and calling c contacts and running beat checks and doing all that newsy stuff. And um, it doesn't happen anymore. So there was nothing on the radio about this hilltop burning up right on the edge of a, a fairly important exurban town. Maybe 15 miles outside of Albuquerque. A lot of people living there. It's got a Walmart. You know, it's a town. And a scary fire and nothing on the radio. The times they are a-changing. Finally... Some information got out on some of the websites, and finally the news guys got their helicopters up and took pictures of it. They could have used generic fire pictures, but for all the good they did. But eh, I should complain. Radio was good when I was in it. Lots of news guys. Ah, <sighs> talk myself into a, a dither there, and probably missed half a dozen moves. But I said the name of this was going to be in defense of science fiction. Has nothing to do with fires, has nothing to do with radio news departments, has very little to do with reality. It's science fiction. You know, I've got both of these books that I shamelessly plug here, the Ms. Time Tripping with Amazing Females, and a reluctant god. Small g. So sci-fi is obviously of significance to me, but I got this articulate, fun, wonderful letter from this guy who doesn't like science fiction, an old friend of mine. And, uh, and we had a little tete-a-tete -tete about it. I wrote a little response to what he said. I really admire what he said. He, he's a good writer expressed himself with articulate ferocity. You know, one of those guys. And I'll read it to you in a minute. Then I'll read you my response. And I'm sure that will drive you to distraction. It's distraction, Oklahoma. Drive to distraction and find out what's not happening. I'm getting a few moves here. If you don't mind, if I keep playing, Spider Solitaire fans typically are sitting there going, oh, come on, don't do that. No, 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 that's a waste of time. You know, stuff like that. Particularly my sister. You know my sister. Mandy. She's a little older than that now, but just as cute. She takes this game way more seriously than I do. Doesn't play it anymore than I do. I play it all the time. The number one time waster in my life is this game. That's why I decided to memorialize it. Should I do this, maybe? Yeah. Why not? 
make a little progress here while the sun shines. That's not it. So, on we go. <clears throat> here, let me read you. When, when, when I get to all the end of all the plays I can find on this, which, oop, don't want to do that. That's silly. And you can take plays back. You can undo, and it doesn't charge you for the undo. It doesn't charge you for the play you're undoing. It's wonderful. You should win all the time. I should win all the time. Not happening. Oh, another dog sound. A groan. Different dog. Different dream, I guess. So, here's what this guy said. Here's why I dislike sci-fi so much. It's because, to my unappreciative brain, all the imaginary, futuristic weaving of fictional context is utterly irrelevant to my world, and I don't want to be bothered with it. Now, that's strong. He goes on to describe an alternate history, one of those, you know, Hitler slipped on a banana peel, hit his head, and became a nice guy, kind of, how would history be different? It's a kind of sci-fi, and he doesn't like it. I don't like it either much. And he said, that would be a shift into fiction that I would not want to read. And here's why. It leaves real-world human nature and real-world transactions and goes into fantasy. And I don't want to have, I don't have the energy to follow the fantasy. I will allow fictional facts and say a Somerset Mom short story because it's based on human nature. I just can't find the energy for sci-fi you got to respect that. That's really good. That's strong. And even though I write sci-fi, and I love sci-fi, I really liked that, and I responded to it. And I'll read you that in a minute after I play this card. There goes a moth crawling over my Maxims book. And I treasure my Maxims. So, is anything happening here? 476, and 6, oh, I do that. Yeah, well, I must quickly catch up before time runneth out, which it does occasionally. I've got another two and a half minutes. I better speed it up. You see any moves I'm missing? I'm losing. I'm $85 down. $35 at a point of a play. And fifty dollars a house margin. You've got to hit five fifty to break even. And I'm down here, eighty-five dollars in the hole, which is not horrible. You can get way more in the hole than that. If I did this and this, these are all useless moves, but I feel compelled to make them before I throw in the towel and give up the ghost. Hmm. Well, maybe it's ghost giving up time. So, I'll, who knows, maybe I can come back and find something else. Up it comes, and up come my response. To me, the wild and woolly speculation, the imaginative extrapolation, and the simple grandiosity of world-building in some extravagant future just took my breath away when I was a kid, six, eight years old, living in Sherman, Texas, which I've mentioned before, when I was six to eight listening to Buck Rogers on the radio, or Dimension X, 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 sort of an early radio twilight zone. They still take my breath away. Talk about juvenile taste extensions. Anyway, I go on and harass him about it. But so you can see I have these, uh, these sophisticated discussions with my friends. I don't want to curse any of my friends by calling them sophisticated, but some of them actually are smart, worldly, sophisticated folks. Well, I'm out of game. I'm out of time. It's been a joy. It's been the science fiction thing, because we have uh, Don Jr. Um, causing all sorts of stir in the news, but I won't comment on that. Have yourself a marvelous, marvelous time. Bye.